Hi, Greaters. Back again with our info session. Today, we are very proud presenting the United International College, or what we call it UIC, which is located in Guangzhou province and the city of Zhuhai. We are very happy and delighted at this time to have Dr. Katerina as the Director of the International Development Office of UIC, and also Ms. Jessica Xiao as the Senior Officer of UIC. Both of them will share the brief information about the universities and its program, of course, and the most important part is the scholarship information. So without further ado, let's get the info session started. Please welcome Dr. Katrina and Ms. Jessica. Yeah, hello, hello. and welcome, Katrina. Hello, nice to meet you online. Hello. Yes. Hello, hello, hello. Let's... Yeah, you can start the PPT, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for having us. We are very happy uh, to be here today and share a little bit um, information about UIC. Here we go. So a uh, very well, warm welcome to UIC. Um, you already see our beautiful campus. Um, as introduced, UIC is located in Guangdong province in Zhuhai city. That's just across the Greater Bay, uh, just across Hong Kong. We are connected by the longest sea bridge of the world. Um, a few words for the history of UIC. UAC was co-founded by Beijing Normal University in Beijing and Hong Kong Baptist University in Hong Kong. Uh, we are a very young institution. Uh, we were founded in 2005 and our students at the four years undergraduate studies will receive a bachelor's degree from Hong Kong Baptist University. Actually, it's the, exactly the same degree as students from Hong Kong Baptist University plus a graduation certificate from UIC. Um, our current president is Professor Tang Tao. He is a famous mathematician and a member of the Academy of Sciences, uh, not only in China, but also a member of the Academy of Sciences in Europe. And he led uh, UIC in the second phase of development. So he is our second president. Um, here, our location. So you, Zhuhai is a, a very beautiful coastal city in the south of China. Um, it's very green, um, award-winning uh, for many years as being one of the most livable cities in China. Um, but in addition, we are in the so-called Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area. At the same time, this region is one of the economic engines in, in mainland China. So you, you will be in a very interesting place, but at the same time in, in a very green uh, and safe study environment. Um, so UIC was founded as a liberal arts university as an alternative to the traditional Chinese public universities. Our medium of instruction is English. So all of our degree programs are taught in English. Um, and um, one of our goals, and it's already in our name, uh, is the internationalization of Chinese higher education and uh, taking a lead in implementing liberal arts education in China. Um, here you see a blueprint uh, of our second phase campus. And on the right hand side, uh, you see our phase one campus. That's where Jessica and I are right now. So we are uh, surrounded by green hills um, with excellent facilities. And our second phase is still in construction. However, our student dormitories are already um, ready. So the first students moved in. Also our first international students, it's very nice uh, little apartment styles, shared bedrooms, but um, they have a shared kitchenette. And of course, everything is air conditioned and uh, in-suite bathrooms. Um, yeah. Here, here are some photos from our second phase. Uh, this is still blueprint. Uh, those dormitory rooms are already existing. So this is what uh, a room in our second phase campus lives, looks like. Um, it's very convenient. Uh, our students are very happy uh, with the living arrangements on our campus. Doctor, so, sorry. Uh, yeah. Regarding the accommodation, the yeah. international student will stay in the second phase of the campus in the dormitory, right? 
um, first and second phase. So we can cannot really predict that. So that is uh, really randomly assigned. So there, there are not really privileges for international students. It's a matter of luck. But actually, okay. the dormitories on our phase one campus are, are also very nice. Um, all dormitories um, in both phases of the campus, every floor has a, a pantry room, laundry rooms, common rooms for the students, self-study rooms, little meet meeting rooms. And actually student life is uh, organized in halls. So we have student halls, they have names and uh, students cultivate some hall culture and sometimes have inter-hall competitions, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, I but hope that answers your question. Yeah, 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 that's very clear. But the thing is, students moving transportation between uh, Pace 1 campus and uh, Pace 2 campus, are they far away or just... Um, it, it's, it's. Uh, I would say it's not far away for me. This is walking distance. But since we are in a hot and humid uh, climate, the school is operating shuttle buses for our students. So Perfect. they can take off the shuttle buses uh, or a bike or have a nice walk through a little park area. So that's up to the students. All right, then. Thank you so much. OK, um, then let's continue. So uh, just a few words, uh, brief words about the Greater Bay Area. Um, that's what we call the region. So that's uh, a couple of cities in Guangdong province. And uh, it's really about um, developing an integration between Hong Kong, Macau, and the big developing cities in Guangdong province, uh, which means the whole region is, is really a, a motor. There are several industries um, really um, growing so fast um, that even people living here as us are surprised uh, every day, basically. There are many of the world famous high tech companies, but for example, also communication industries, tourism industries, all that is developing fast. And traditionally, Guangdong province used to be like a, a door to the world, I would say. So Guangdong province is famous for being world open, welcoming international uh, people to trade with them uh, and also to become friends. Uh, Having said this, means the whole region has also very good uh, talent recruitment policies, etc. So, and and many um, international companies are, are located in the region. So, uh, I think it's really one of the places to be for for young people to explore uh, further developments, maybe career opportunities, probably entrepreneurship. There's really uh, many things going on, and I think it's really inspiring. Uh, whatever major you are from, there there will be interesting things to learn in, in the region. So education is very strong in Zhuhai. Here's just some pictures. Um, Zhuhai is also a touristy city, so um, it's called a romantic city in, in China, which means uh, we have many travelers spending a weekend here before or before they go to Macau. That's a picture of the bridge. So most international students or visitors to UIC will probably arrive at Hong Kong airport. And then the first thing they will see is the bridge. And from the bridge, the skyline of Zhuhai, uh, where we can pick up our guests. Um, yeah, so our mission was really to develop a liberal arts college or university. Um, and to which is dedicated to produce well-rounded global talents. Um, that means for us, it's really important. One thing is being academically excellent. So our students will receive an excellent undergraduate education. Uh, from the very beginning, our college was focused on the student. We really want to help students develop the academic skills. But in addition to that, um, there is more to be a well-rounded talent. So we have courses in so-called whole person education development center. Uh, that's, for example, something like um, emotional intelligence or service learning. Uh, we have a strong general education curriculum, just that students can explore interests or talents beyond the chosen major. So there will be all kinds of opportunities where, where students can um, explore interests, give it a try, uh, maybe develop a, a new interest, a new passion for something. It's just to, to have the whole variety and at the same time learning to, to communicate well with others, others work well with others, um, communicate uh, across cultures, um, resolve sometimes little misunderstandings, etc. Um, 
you will be accommodated in a dormitory. And um, currently, um, that the cost is around six thousand four hundred for a two beds room, uh, or four thousand for a three beds room. Um, normally, you will be housed with a UIC students. So um, our international students live together with our Chinese students in the halls. Um, and the tuition for, for the standard programs is at the moment uh, 100,000 yuan per year. The musical art program is, is a little bit more expensive uh, since uh, training in music instruments is um, very resource intensive. That's very interesting that uh, regarding the dormitory, I would like to highlight that the international student will share and live together with the local Chinese student. That's very, very, very nice environment. I mean, for the international students, they can develop a lot of things inside from the, besides from the language, the culture and everything. That's very nice from the UIC. Uh, absolutely. And actually, um, Jessica and her team and our students affairs office, it's, it's, it's not random. We actually interview our Chinese roommates and they're really basically the first friend, the first buddy. Uh, we, we normally try to connect our international students before their arrival with their future roommate. And, um, wow. and the roommate turned out to be super helpful helping our new international students to settle down. The other way around, of course, it's, it's a good opportunity for our Chinese students to learn something about people from different cultures um, and then sometimes really um, to communicate in English only and, and learn a little bit language from each other. So it's, it's a good concept. Yeah. yeah, 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 especially for the international student because they love to mingle with uh, during their studies, I mean, like for four years. If you can get mingle, make friendship, that will be a very strong future network. Yeah. 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 And it's also the whole culture that does support that. Um, exactly. And yeah. So, yeah. So, and, and most students, so our current cohort, we see them less in, in our office. That means they already made so many friends that they do not have time to stop by. That's a very positive sign. So, <laughs> in, in, in all kinds of student activities and student club, is etc. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, a few words about our faculties and, and students. Um, UIC by uh, proportion of faculty members is very internationalized. So one third, uh, yeah, around 28%, but normally it's uh, around one third. That's still the aftermath of the pandemic is from overseas, overseas. So we have uh, faculty members from uh, 30, around 30 countries right now. Um, then we have uh, between 20 and 30% from Hong Kong, Macau and Taiwan, and then 50% from the Chinese mainland. Uh, however, all faculty members have international experience, be it either they um, have their PhD degrees from abroad or teaching experience abroad, et cetera. Um, so it's it's really a, a very nice international mix and uh, gives the whole teaching environment a quite international atmosphere. Um, our students come mainly, um, so the, the errors on the, on, on the slide are, are not representative in, in terms of proportion. Um, most of our students come from the Chinese mainland, uh, but everywhere from the Chinese mainland, which is also culturally quite diverse. And then we, we do admit students from Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan, and then international students. And um, of course, now with the borders open, we hope to invite more international friends to join us on our beautiful campus. Yes, I I would like just wondering how many total for the local uh, students. Yeah, um, so we have undergraduate programs and graduate programs. The overall to total is a little bit below 10,000 students. Uh, we wow. still have some room to grow with the new campus uh, growing and the new campus will also once completed uh, will be home for our graduate school and the research facilities. Um, we have, um, I think, eight to 9,000 undergraduate students and wow. uh, I think around 1,000 graduate students at the moment. <laughs> wow, that's a large of number. So international students actually can get real to be among the uh, local Chinese student, which is good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and really from, from all parts of China. So that's 
something very lovely. So you can meet someone from Inner Mongolia or someone from Yunnan and um, yeah, really. Yeah, exactly, make- exactly, exactly. That diversity, international students can also learn the diversity of the local uh, mainland uh, China students and also different cultural background and social uh, status. It will be very nice, interesting. Yeah, it, it's really interesting for uh, until now for me. It's until I have been many years in UIC. Um, there's every day something new I can learn from either Chinese colleagues or our Chinese students, and and of course also from our international students. So it's really a good place to to learn things about uh, the culture of others. Yes. Um. I will say a few words to our academic programming uh, before I pass over to to Jessica. So we are organized in faculties and schools. So we have a faculty of business and management that's in terms of student numbers, currently our biggest faculty. We have a faculty of science and technology. We have a faculty of humanities and social sciences, and we have a school of culture creativity. Uh, those four faculties and schools have departments and programs, and they are complemented by our School of General Education, uh, which provides general education uh, courses, or for example, um, English language courses, academic English, Chinese language, and our whole person education modules um, to the whole student body, which means in, in those courses, students will uh, interact across the schools okay. and faculties. Sorry, um, the inter- have, sorry, yeah. sorry, doctor. The international students, I know that your UIC is totally 100% English medium course, but for the international right. students, do, do they have a compulsory courses for Chinese language and culture maybe? Yes, yes, um, we do expect, and um, that's, um, that's compulsory, but I think that's probably also one of the incentives uh, why to come to China. Um, to learn Chinese language. So um, our international students, um, which means Chinese students from the mainland, they have university Chinese. So they also have to fulfill some Chinese language requirements. Our international students will be in classes uh, from beginners Chinese to intermediate advanced. So um, of course, we hope that our international students build their language skills quickly. Um, for many reasons. Of course, in UIC, it's no problem to, to do everything in English, but uh, just for the social life or traveling in China or uh, whatever. So, and and of course, um, we, we hope students will learn Chinese and of course the, the experience will be deeper. I, I think you, you connect at different levels with people if yep. you speak you. the language. So yes, they will have to do that. Um, it's basically part of our core curriculum. So uh, the curriculum is, is divided. There are major required courses, etc. that's to fulfill um, the graduation requirements in the academic specialty. But then uh, we have the general education or core curriculum and, and uh, those Chinese language courses will be located in, in that area. Um, so in the faculty for of business and management, uh, we have um, programs, that you would expect being there, like accounting, applied economics, finance, management of human resources, marketing management. But we also do have entrepreneurship and innovation. We have e-business management information systems. That's also something hot in China. E-commerce is so strong. There are many things to learn. We have um, two new programs. They just started this year. That's uh, business analytics and digital media management. So. Uh, that's um, also if you have a stronger interest or, or passion for technology, I think that might be interesting programs to explore. Um, on this on this faculty of business, can you back again the slide, please? Uh, yeah. Which the most favorite major? I mean, students. Would love to of, all majors are great, but our accounting and finance programs are really really strong okay. and very popular. So um, our accounting students also won many competitions. So uh, students in, in most faculties will compete um, on a regular basis, either in the Chinese mainland or in Hong Kong. And our accounting students really uh, regularly win uh, prizes in, in those competitions. Uh, but 
the other programs are finance is also uh, also in terms of numbers a big pro program uh, accounting i think is still in 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 terms of application numbers, etc. So that's um, really, um, I guess, one of, of the lead programs. It's also that program is at the same time one department. So other programs are sort of clustered together in, in departments, but accounting is, is one program. Yeah. Um, in our Faculty of Science and Technology, um, of course, we, we do have computer science and technology. Um, and AI that belongs so the first and the last one belong to one uh, department together. We we do have data science and statistics. Um, we have applied psychology, food science and technology, environmental science. Um, we have financial mathematics and applied mathematics. Um, we have um, very strong professors in in those fields. I guess I'm I'm prepared that you will ask the question again which program is um, the hottest. Um, I think it's the programs in our computer science family right now. So we have, we have strong interest in, in the program of computer science and technology, artificial intelligence and data science. Uh, but for some international students in terms of international applications, um, we also get quite some applications for applied psychology, for example. Or, or food science, so that really depends on the interest. But <laughs> of this. but this is this is very interesting, uh, uh, doctor, because the food science and technology in China in most university they don't offer English taught program. But thank God UIC have it. So for Indonesia for Indonesian students who's looking for food science and technology, this is the best choice then. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it yeah, and it's a super interesting program and then we have nice research labs and and also we have a laboratory to test food safety so so all really um topics that uh, are very important to all of us so yeah i like to visit the laboratories or, or see the students presentations when they invent new foods <laughs> um yeah we, we have humanities and social sciences. That's, I think, also non-standard. So many programs um, are available in, in English language. So we have public relations and advertising, media and communication studies. Um, so I think in, in terms of enrollments, that's the, the communication-related programs are the strongest programs. And um, also our home institution, Hong Kong Baptist University, they are, they are very strong in, in all communications programs. Um, but we also have very interesting niche programs like globalization and development or digital social science. So that's also a brand new program, bridging uh, traditional social sciences with new technologies. Uh, we have a program, Chinese culture and global communication, that might be also something interesting to explore or English language and literature studies, applied translation. Um, here's one, one string attached. Uh, that program might really require very, very solid uh, Chinese language knowledge in advance. So if, if any applicant is by chance, for example, bilingual or already had a long learning journey of, of Putonghua, that might be a choice. Otherwise, applied translation might be not the, the number one choice. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then our School of Culture and Creativity. So we have media arts and design, cinema and television, culture, creativity and management, music performance, animation and interactive media, tourism, hospitality, and, and event management. Um, all those programs are also quite um, popular with international applications, especially cinema and television and also, we have uh, in, in animation and in media arts design, so that's more for the creative people. Yeah. So that's about the portfolio. I guess um, there might be interesting choices for, for many candidates. Um, yeah. So during their time at UIC, um, UIC, of course, our curriculum is international, the degree from HKBU, our faculty is. Um, apart from um, helping international students and, and advising on how to apply, etc., um, 
we also do have international cooperation. So during the four years at UAC, of course, students have a chance to go somewhere else to study. So we have partnerships with 60 plus universities and students can, for example, apply to exchange for a semester to one of our partner schools. Um, we have very popular summer programs. So before the pandemic, I think at least 600 students went on an academic program during the summer to, uh, to earn some credits. So normally the credits will be transferable um, so the, but not only um, the international office, so we also have summer programs in, in, in Hong Kong at HKBU, um, the experiential learning courses, uh, etc. So students will have plenty of choices during the comparatively long summer vacation to, to um, learn something new in, in whatever field. Yeah. Okay. How about the, a lot of students, especially Indonesian students, are asking about the chances for the internships? Um, in, in general, so um, that is good news. Uh, comparatively new policy in the Chinese mainland does allow international students to go on internships and UAC has a dedicated office for this purpose. It's called Career okay. Development Center. Um, they will advise students, both uh, Chinese students and international students um, this uh, office also, for example, organizes career talks in addition to career talks organized by the programs or the faculty. So actually every academic faculty also, they, they always have career talks going on or industry speakers coming in, etc. Uh, but they also have a, a database for internships and uh, we'll, we'll be happy to, so normally, for example, when international students come in, we will in, invite the colleagues from our Career Development Center um, to explain students to students how, how does it work. Um, it is uh, sometimes, it's a little bit more complicated to get an internship placement for an international student. But for example, there are also in-house internships in UIC and, and it is possible now, but actually that will be discussed on a case by case basis, depending on the CV of the student um the company where the student hopes to be placed etc but um yeah we have a strong team and they also for example organize um sessions on postgraduate studies there's a big fair many uic students actually will go for a master's degree in one of the world's top universities so all all those activities are available for all students mm. nice yeah yeah, that's um, just some figures. Um, actually, the most updated data is our last year's graduating cohort, 84% uh, of our students went on, on a master's degree. And, and UIC students, really, our graduates um, gained quite some reputation and are admitted to top universities uh, worldwide. And we receive a very positive feedback, actually, uh, when we communicate with uh, those schools. So they are very happy with our graduates and their communication skills, etc. cetera. Um, yeah. So maybe I pass here over to Jessica. Jessica is actually managing all incoming students, maybe a little bit of how um, student life works. And of course, very important, how to apply. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Please welcome. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Joko. Yeah, I will introduce something about the uh, uh, activities and also the how to apply to study at UIC. Uh, first, I will talk about something about scholarships. Uh, UIC now provides uh, three kinds of uh, scholarships, which is a uh, full scholarship, uh, partial scholarship, and government scholarships. And full entry scholarship, which is worth 100,000 RMB. And the partial scholarships is worth uh, 30,000 RMB. And the government scholarships is 10,000 RMB. And for full scholarships, uh, students need to be eight students and need to be high academic achiever, then they will be uh, given the full uh, entry scholarship. And partial scholarship need to be B or B plus students. And actually the entry scholarships based on two um, elements. The first one is their transcripts. They need to be A students or B students. And the second element is um, uh, based on the uh, performance in the interview. Because after the students submit all the application materials, we will pr proceed internally 
and uh, the interview will be arranged. So the students, if uh, performance uh, perform very well in the interview, then the scholarships may be given. Mm. So that's the two elements. The and, interview, uh, sorry, the interview will be online, right? For the international students. Yes, it's an online okay. interview. Yes. Nice. And uh, USC is doing rolling admission. So that means first uh, come, first served for, for the scholarships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And USC has very limited scholarships. So if you want to study in China, I mean, in USC, so you need to apply as early as possible. Yeah, mm -hmm. I guess so. And may, may I compliment it just um, so since uh, the scholarships are mainly merit based, um, uh, they they can be renewed. So it's not not only for the first year, but um, which means we of course hope that the incoming students then keep their academic academic performance and, and maybe become our ambassadors in in their home countries. So that's the idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Our scholarship. And USC now accepts um this kinds of uh, qualifications like IB qualifications and uh, GCE qualification, Cambridge Pre U diploma, and also BTEC and SAT uh, scores, qualifications, AP and SAT, associate degree student and holders, and also IGETC uh, diploma. And for Indonesia students, we have a regional admission curricula. That means they need to finish SMA um, diploma. They, they need to have this certification. They can study at USC. And also they need to have the English language qualifications. Okay. Like for... Um, Else, they need to be 6.0, and for TOEFL, IBT need to be 79 for the English okay. language qualification. Yeah. Right. And how to apply to study at USC? Uh, this PPT list is about being documents, like they need to provide graduation certification of high school, and also all the transcripts, and two recommendation letters, one from the uh, counselor, one from their academic advisor. And uh, they also need to provide personal statements. They need to say why they want to study in China and they, why they want to study this major and et cetera. And also they need to provide passport, passport copies. And for language certification, I just mentioned, for TOEFL score is 79 internet-based or else, uh, else score 6.0. So our application deadline starts um, September to the next year, May the 15th, every year. Right. And the students can send all these documents to our email address like is at usc.edu.cn or they can apply online. They can go to USC website, they can find International Development Office and uh, on the main website of International Development Office, there's a apply now button. So when they apply, uh, click the um, apply now button, then they can go to our application form and they can upload all the uh, supporting documents. So after uh, International Development Office received these um, supporting documents, we will uh, proceed internally. We will arrange interview, and after the interview is uh, passed, then the offer will be given within two weeks. Nice. Yeah. And then maybe just uh, sometimes it is uh, maybe confusing, all those qualifications. Uh, of course, uh, we are happy to answer questions. Students can just reach out to us or, or maybe even also to, to you. Uh, and, and then we can uh, give more advice and, and, and give more guidance over how to manage the qualifications, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, right. We are hand in hand to give tailor-made for student needs in, in, in terms of they need help of so everything, yeah. Also, if there's a consultation needed, etc. So uh, as long as we have manpower, um, we, we really try to answer all questions. It's very important uh, to us that students um, have a good impression when they apply and, and really say, okay, this, this is the right fit for me. That's the place where I want to spend the next four years. Yeah. Correct. Thank you, Katharina. And here are some pictures of the campus scenery. So that's the main campus. That's our learning resource center. And these are the insights of our learning resource center. Oh, yeah, that's our sports complex and sports park and student cafeteria. Ah, this is important, student cafeteria, <laughs> which is most of the students spend their breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> 
yes, if we have several cafeterias and 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 then plus of course uh, also sandwich shops, sushi shops, etc. So um, there are plenty of choices on campus, but also um, as you saw in the blueprint, that village in between. Of course, there there is good food everywhere to find. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here are the, some pictures of our dormitories, phase one campus and also phase two campus. Yep. Yeah, as Dr. Katharina, you just mentioned that we have uh, two students stay in my room and one international student, one USC student. We want them to mingle together. They can, I mean, for international students, they can learn Chinese language and also Chinese culture. Yep, that's very important. Yeah, that's our contact information. That's all. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for the wonderful, brief, short, and very informative of this uh, beautiful UIC. For students, of course, if you still need any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact us or directly you can also contact the International Development Office of UIC. Here are some of the our information of the social media. Of course, if it's already on YouTube, you're already in ours. But uh, just follow also the our Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. For the further information, you can directly contact, and we will help you, assistance you one by one. I mean, like, consultation will be private one by one. All right. Thank you so much for the opportunity, uh, Dr. Katarina and me. Jessica. Yes. Thank we you hope so that, yeah, we hope that in the future, I mean, 2024, we can get a lot of Indonesian, high quality Indonesian students can apply and study at UIC. We hope so too. You are very welcome to join us. Apply oh. early and maybe you will win a scholarship even. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So cross our finger. So student graders, that's the end of our today's in possession. I would like to one more again. Thank you, Dr. Katrina and Miss Jessica for this wonderful opportunity. We, we will get in touch with you then. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.